Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Take a look at this diagram here. I call this the Trinity. This is what we're going to be working on in the next few videos. Uh, we're going to build an industrial grade reporting and diagnostics infrastructure. And we're going to be putting that in early so that all the stuff that we build going forward can use it. Uh, so if you remember in Hardware 3D, you know that I used exceptions for basically everything. For all my reporting, I would just throw an exception that would bubble up to the top and you'd get some kind of message box. But that's kind of stinky. It's, uh, it's not good if you don't have a log. We want to have a log. Sometimes you just want to print a warning. You don't want to crash the entire program. You just want to log some information, like maybe some uh, benchmarking measurements or something like that. I don't know. Whatever. At any rate, we're going to be using logging as our primary channel for reporting. Uh, we're still going to be using exceptions, don't get me wrong. You know, I like my constructors to actually construct stuff. I don't want to have to call an init function afterwards. And I like my functions to behave like proper functions and return a useful value rather than just an error code. So exceptions, definitely going to be using them, but it's not going to be our primary mechanism for reporting. Reporting is being done with a log utility that we'll be building. And we're also going to replace the standard library assertion because it's a little stinky. So it's going to, we're going to make something nice for that. And a lot of this stuff is going to be using stack traces. So that'll make uh, diagnostics a lot more informative. Now, among these three components, log is definitely going to be the one with the most work to do on it, the biggest architecture here. So that's what we're going to start with. Take a look at this beautiful diagram here. Yes, this is the architecture of the logging system. The basic idea is that you fill some structure uh, called the entry with the information for logging, which is, you know, obviously there's a text message usually, but we can also attach other information like the level of the log. Is it a warning? Is it an error? A timestamp would be nice. The line, maybe there's an error code. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we could attach to an entry in a log. Put that in a structure. When it's all, the structure is all built, we will submit it to a logging channel. You can have multiple ones. There will be a default one. A channel has two things. It has an array of policies and it has an array of drivers. So the policies are things that you can use to transform the entries that come in based on some kind of policy you have. Maybe you want for every entry, no matter what, I want to attach, I don't know, like a stack trace to it. You can use, put that as a policy. Policies also return a Boolean value. You can use that to filter log entries. So if I submit an entry and it matches some kind of rule, I can say, no, just discard this, don't log it. So policies, and then you have an array of drivers. And drivers basically, at the simplest case, they just represent some kind of medium that you want to log to. You could be logging to a file, right? You could be logging to the IDE window, output debug string. You could be logging to a separate console window. You could be logging to network. You could be logging into process communications. You could be logging to a database. You could log to many different things. Driver allows anyone to create different drivers and inject them so that they can log to their medium of choice. And in general, I think loggers will often have the option to customize them with a custom formatter. So if you're logging to file, you can inject a custom formatter and change the format of the log entry in the file. So that's the overall architecture. Now, one thing I didn't talk about here, the Fluent Builder. So if I were just to make this entry, if you could build it with like a constructor, there will be many options. You will have to fill in many arguments into the entry constructor every time you want to build an entry. That's annoying. It's also annoying to have to construct an entry structure and then set its members. Uh, so what I want is I want like a fluid interface where I can do entry, dot and then whatever I want to do. If I want to add an error code, I could do entry.hr and supply an H result. If, and if I wanted to change the level to, I don't know, error, I could do entry.error and maybe supply with that a string, whatever. But I only have to supply the things that I want to set and everything else will be default. And also, whenever I hit dot, I'll get my IntelliSense with all the options available. It'll be beautiful. You'll see. You'll see.
All right, so I added here just a very basic structure to hold our log entry data. We got the level of the log, we got the string that's attached, basically the, the body, if you will, the note, and then stuff that we can inject with a macro. And we're also definitely gonna wanna attach timestamps to all of our logs. So this is a very basic uh, list of stuff. We're gonna add more goodies to uh, this structure later on. And you can see here, in level.h, I just defined uh, enumeration of the different levels that we have and a function that just gives us string for each of those uh, enumeration keys. All right, now let's start on our uh, Fluent Entry Builder. So I'm gonna... Now the builder serves as the interface for people who want to be logging. Uh, and I kind of want to hide the, uh, the structure from them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this one Entry builder and we're gonna do private inheritance from entry so what this lets us do is let's say we have a function void f and it takes uh, a pointer to entry and if we have a member function void g we can actually call f with the this pointer and it'll work because inside the class here we are aware of this inheritance relationship so we're able to pass entry builder as an entry but no one else can do that so there's a little funky stuff here so the first thing we need here is a constructor takes in some of the uh, source line stuff that's going to be piped in from a macro sets up your entry now we're going to need some functions for the fluid interface that uh, people who want to log are going to use and a fluid interface means we always return a reference to the builder so that you can chain. So let's have one that uh, we'll just call it note. I'm gonna make them lowercase for this. Builder level will allow you to set the level. Now we also want a function that allows you to set the channel that you want to log to. So we're gonna set up here an abstract interface for our channels. Uh, because channel is going to be one of the things that we're going to allow people to, you know, extend, implement themselves, and inject into the system. So we'll do class, and I'm just going to make all my abstract interfaces I submit, and I'll allow you to submit an entry to this channel. Uh, let me think here. I think I would not like to include entry in here, so we're going to forward declare struct entry and then submit will take in i want to i want to think if it's going to be constant or if it's going to be mutable and i think we'll make this one mutable but we'll have to think about that so it'll take in a reference to an entry and this has got to obviously be virtual and there we go we go to entry builder in the private interface for the builder it is going to maintain a pointer to a channel so let's forward declare here as well uh, class i channel and in private we'll do i channel pointer um, we'll just call this i don't know target or destination maybe is better destination we'll set that initially to null pointer uh, so now we have a function in the fluid interface that will let you set the channel by passing it an i channel pointer. Okay, so this will be the start of our interface here. So I had entry builder.cpp. Now we can go in here and we can start creating definitions for all of these functions here. You need a definition. There you go. And you get a you get a definition and one more please here you also get a definition there we go all right so now we got all these definitions let's just promote this here beautiful so now we fill in our fluid interface well first we're going to set up our entry builder all right so because we inherit from entry here we got all these members that we can set up uh so let's go entry and we'll do dot level is equal to level we'll say default is error uh, so we have source file is equal to equal to source. source line there we go 
So this is the initialization. And I think that's all that we need for right now. Channel is set to null. Okay, so now for note, obviously this should not be empty. Note should take instead w string the note. I'm thinking eh, it's probably by value is best, but we'll see. Instead w string note. It's also worth thinking about using a string view in here, but don't worry about that right now. So in that case, all right, I'm seeing a problem here. These names that I chose, they kind of overlap with the names in here. But what I can do is I can just kind of put a little underscore on all these bad boys, we'll add that underscore into here, and that'll be nice disambiguation. And now we can just do note is equal to note underscore is equal to std move note. Now for every one of these, we got a return pointer to this because we have that fluid interface so we can chain operations. And we'll do the same kind of stuff here. I'm gonna rename this to pdest just because I like my p's, you know? I can't I can't give up on my p's just yet. So pdest, this should also, we wanna keep consistent. We should be using this trailing underscore. And then is equal to pchan. And we should also return. Bam, bam, okay. So here's our basic fluid interface here. Now the last piece of the puzzle is, well, how do we actually submit an entry to a channel so that it can get written out. And the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna do that as the destruction operation of this bad boy. Uh, so entry builder, give it a little destructor here, and we'll just do if p destination, if that's not null, then we do p dest pointer to, ah, we don't have the definition of that, channel.h. That will give us the definition of this, and we can submit our self to the channel. Nice. Okay. Now, let's just do a quick little test here. This won't be the final testing, but just a little bit of a, a little bit of a testy westy. A uh, new item. So I just like to copy from an existing test. Jam that into here. This should be a .cpp file. Yeah. Okay, so now what do we need to change? Probably don't need this. We want source log and uh, I don't know. Let's try with entry builder. We probably need channel as well. All right, so normally when we make a log entry, we have a macro that helps us out. So we're just going to put that macro in here to start with, but later we're going to define it in the actual source code. Define chillog as something. Do log dot, no, log, and it's going to create an entry. It's going to construct it, and it's going to pass in the parameters. No, it's not entry. It's going to create an entry builder. So we do that. And the parameters are going to be some other macros. So we have a wide version of the file macro that gives us the source file name. And we have a wide version of, uh, let me see here, function macro, function w. I think this may be, thing, may be a thing that exists. And we have line, which is just a number, so it does not need a wide version. Now you might be wondering, why does this have to be a macro? And the reason why is because if it's a function, if we do this inside of a function call, the line number will always be the same. It'll be the line number of that function. But if it's a macro, it'll get expanded in the place where we call this macro. And so it'll be appropriate to the place where we're logging from. So we just, this macro just creates an entry builder. Mock channel public i, that's not right, that's not an i, i channel. And so we need to implement the submit function. What we're gonna do is we're just going to make uh, a copy of whatever is passed in that we can then assert against. So entry, entry underscore, ah, this should probably be 
log entry, right? And then we'll just do entry underscore is equal to E. So let's say we want to do a little bit of logging, uh, some info. We go chill log dot, and then we'll do level log level info dot, and the note that we're going to add is hi and dot. Ah, so we want to log to a channel. So we'll create a mock channel, chan, and then we are going to dot chan, chan, chan. And then when this gets destroyed, it should log to this. Remember, this is creating a temporary object, so it'll get destroyed at the end of this statement, and it should log into chan. And then we should be able to go into chan and we should do like assert uh, r equal to using namespace std string literals and we'll just assert r equal hi and chan dot entry dot note log level Info is what we expect for dot level. We expect the source line to be 31 because we are logging from line 31. All right, so let's run this. Let's see if it works. All right, there's one problem here. When we use r equal with an enumeration type, it wants you to define a way of basically formatting that as a string so it can output it in the uh, test results. Now we don't want to do that right now. We might do that later. So let's just do is true. And we'll just do this is equal to this. There we go. And that should work for now. And then we'll, we'll think about adding that specialization in later. All right, so it built and the static analysis actually caught the, the, uh, the error that I always make. So we'll, we'll be sure to add that destructor in there. But let's just to run the test, see if they actually work. Test Explorer, let's see if we can find our test in here. And we do find our log tests, show off fluent, let's run this. And it works. So we can see that after logging, the information gets transmitted to our channel and we are able to, you know, confirm that all the information is set. So this is how the fluent interface works. You type dot, you get all your options in here. And when you're done, it gets submitted automatically to the channel. Uh, I don't like having to type, you know, log level info every time. I'm probably going to, instead of just adding a level uh, fluent interface here, I'm going to add dot, you know, warn dot info dot error. And I might even allow you to supply the text when you set the severity level. But uh, yeah, this is, this is a start. We're going to build up from this. We will continue to flesh out our entry structure and the Fluent Builder. And we're also going to start implementing concrete channels and drivers and, and all that good stuff in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more C++ game engine infrastructure.